Hi, everybody, and welcome to another webinar series from Avidi. And today on this beautiful Tuesday, we're going to be talking about visual approaches in Avi OS 10.3. Of course, I'm Mike Salmon, your technical marketing specialist. I'm joined today by two of our folks from the support department, uh, Will Reichert over at Pilot and IFD support, and Frank Utter, the tech support training lead. Uh, their emails are below. You can always reach out to me at marketing at avidine.com. Uh, as always, make sure that your speakers are turned on. There will be a Q&A uh, &A at the end. And of course, this webinar is being recorded. We will have a webinar replay available to you uh, immediately after this. We will also make this, this video available on our YouTube and our other social channels uh, as well. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's talk about visual approaches with 10.3. I'm gonna be talking about uh, just an overview of visual approaches. Uh, first, we'll get into setup and configuration, how we configure the IFD for visual approaches. We'll do some basic stuff like a simple VFR flight plan. And then after that, we'll get into a more practical exercise of a visual approach uh, while we're on an actual flight plan. And we're, we're on an IFR flight plan, and we cancel that to do a visual approach. And then we'll have a Q&A at the very end. Uh, before we start, it's really important uh, that, that I do make this point that visual approaches, they are non-precision and they are for use in uh, visual meteorological conditions only and are intended to provide enhanced situational awareness in those situations. Um, a, it, it, like we say here, a stabilized approach is a safer approach, right? So that's one of the reasons why we have visual approaches now with AviOS 10.3. And um, why do we have it? It's good practice for when you're flying actual instrument approaches. So uh, it, it's a cool feature. Um, I, think, I think a lot of people are going to get some good use out of it. And it's, it's something that's really cool to have. Now, when can we uh, use visual approaches? Um, and I'll show you here. So you can use visual approaches at all runways and all airports in the Jeppesen NAV database, including private strips. However, that airport must have a defined threshold. What do I mean by that? There is a latitude, there's a lat long for the runway threshold in the Jeppesen NAV database. And we can see that in the info tab on our IFD. If we go into the info tab and we look at a specific runway, in this case, I'm looking at Heaven's Landing in Clayton, Georgia, beautiful, beautiful runway, uh, beautiful place to go. It does, if you go to the info tab and you're looking at GE99 under runways, it has a lat long of the runway thresholds. You can do a visual approach at this airport. If I'm looking at an airport in the info tab and I do not see a lat long under the runways, in this case, I've got Antiquers Aerodrome down here in Delray Beach. There's no lat long for that runway. Therefore, there's no defined runway threshold. Therefore, there is no visual approach available. So if you are loading up a flight plan and you're trying to load a visual approach and that's not, uh, that, that's not a possibility in your drop-down menu for a visual approach, this is probably why, especially if you have visual approaches turned on in your setup options. So moving right along, that is activated just like an instrument approach. Instead of activate approach, uh, uh, the FMS hook activate approach, you will see an activate visual and we created that for increased awareness. So instead of saying activate approach, it's just gonna say activate visual just so that you know, hey, this is a visual approach that you're getting ready to activate. And that is enabled and disabled in the setup menu and that is user dependent. So if you have different user profiles set up up to 10 with AbbeyOS 10.3, uh, each one of those has a different uh, visual approach setting that you can either turn on or turn off. So that's what I mean when I say it's user dependent. So uh, moving along again, uh, what is a visual approach? What does it look like on the map? Well, it's a single leg aligned with the runway. It does have an overlay of the dashed white line for pattern entry, but that pattern entry overlay is for reference only. The FMS is not going to guide the autopilot for pattern entry. All right, uh, what that's essentially going to be, it's going to be an extended runway center line that extends about about uh, 20 miles. And that's going to be another leg in your flight plan. Uh, sounds confusing. It's OK. I will uh, I'll explain uh, in, in, in greater detail. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that the visual approach, you'll see that in your flight plan. Uh, you'll see the yellow lines will say visual. That is a discontinuity or otherwise known as a gap in the route. Why is that a gap in the route? Uh, because you have to activate it. Um, you, there is an overt action that you have to do in order to activate that approach. All right. Um, there are times when you don't have to uh, do that. And I'll show you what I mean by that and, and when that that becomes a thing where you have to activate or you don't activate, I'll get into that. But it always, this this discontinuity or this gap will always precede a visual approach in your flight plan that typically requires some sort of activation, okay? And that guidance, uh, if it is coupled to an autopilot, will end uh, a tenth of a mile from that defined runway threshold. And your uh, approach mode CDI scaling uh, and there's going to be 0.3 nautical miles for your lateral guidance on your CDIs for those approaches. Okay. It does offer customizable descent angles, pattern widths, and glide slopes. And I'll get, I'll get more into that once we start talking about the FMS setup uh, in, in a couple later slides. Okay. Um, I did mention this uh, in some of my previous webinars when I was talking about 10.3 and some of the features. I do want to remind everybody that all of your visual pattern entries will be selectable if you have visual approaches set up. What does that mean? Know your airport facilities diagram just like you should do for any visual approach or any airport that you fly into. In this case, I've got Cluiston Airglades uh, to India Sierra. If I'm doing a visual for runway 13, I see in my AFD that it is right traffic only. If I do pull this up in the IFD, I will see all of the visual entries available, whether it be straight in, left, right, uh, base, and downwind legs. Just keep that in mind. So you know that runway 13 is right traffic. Your only selections are, are going to be the, the right hand entries in those patterns, whether it be a right base, right downwind, or straight in. So just keep that in mind, folks. Okay, so how do we set that up and configure it in our IFD? Well, with the new setup menu with iOS 10.3, we have all these uh, the FMS style rows now on our setup page. We're gonna go over to the FMS block, and we're gonna push that plus sign, and that's gonna bring our drop down menu, and we're gonna scroll down to visual approaches. We're gonna turn that on, and then we'll get to our visual approach settings, where we will have the ability to change our final length, our pattern width, and our glide slope. Now, what does that mean? And what is that supposed to look like? Well, your final length, of course, is your distance from the runway threshold at which a base leg intercepts the final approach course. So when you turn from base to final, the length from where you're at now to the runway threshold, it sets it as a factory default of one nautical mile, but you can adjust that further out. The pattern width is your base leg length. Right, that's going to be the distance between the runway and a downwind leg. So from downwind to base, how long are you, do you want to fly before you turn final? That factory default is 1.2 nautical miles. And then finally, we have the glide slope, and that is the descent angle of the final approach. The factory default there is four degrees. Now we can adjust that glide slope between one degree and six degrees in tenth of a degree increments. And that is just the, the glide slope on the final that's, that's uh, not precision. It is just set up uh, as a default. And that glide slope runs all the way at, let's say the factory default, four degrees, all the way along that final leg length. OK, so if you are following along with me on IFD Trainer, I'll give you a second to pull it up if you want to pull it up. We're just going to basically build a simple VFR flight plan. What I want to do is I want to take off out of Melbourne and I want to fly to X26, and I want to fly the visual approach for runway 23. All right, so how I do that is I set my origin uh, KMLB. I'll add my uh, waypoint for X26, uh, and I'll hit the procedure twice to bring up X26 approaches, do a visual 23, and then a right base. Let me go ahead and see if I can't pull up a, uh, a demo for that. Bear with me, guys. How are we doing in the chat so far, folks? Looks like we're all set. No, uh, no other questions up until this point. Nope, we're all right. good. Okay, all right. So I'm going to bring in. Can everybody see my uh, 
my thing here. All right, so we set our origin as KMLB. If I click on the screen here, I'm gonna bring up my waypoint and I'm gonna hit X and I can see my geofill already working for me. I hit X26, there's geofill, it knows X26. All right, I'm gonna hit procedure. First time I do, it brings up departures for MLB7. I hit procedure again, and it's gonna bring up X26 approaches. I'm gonna pick the visual 23. I'm gonna click on it, or I can even hit enter here. And let's go for a right base because I looked at my AFD and it's right traffic only for runway 23. All right, so there it is. Let's go ahead and hide that and get that out of the way. All right, and just like I said, runway 23 on my AFD, that's right traffic only, okay? I bring that in, I hit visual 23, and if I'm previewing the pro, the uh, if I'm in preview mode, I can see uh, there's my extended center line for runway 23, and then I go ahead and select a right base, and then I can see that hashed line is where I'm going to enter uh, the pattern, okay? Now, if you do that, you're gonna see the extended runway center line and a dashed base leg overlay here. That's what you're gonna see, and you, you would totally expect to see that. Um, if you did follow along with me and you didn't enter, you didn't activate that flight plan, you're going to notice something that the visual approach is automatically activated. And the reason for that is because there's no waypoints between the current location, which is me sitting on the ground in Melbourne, and the approach leg. It's just straight to X26. I activated the flight plan with the visual approach already loaded into my flight plan. So you will not, in this case, you will not see the activate visual FMS hook or that line select key show up. All right. Now, if I don't load the visual before activating the flight plan, let's say I'm just flying uh, and, and I haven't picked an approach into X26 and I'm flying along and I decide that I do want to fly the visual for runway 13 and I'm flying along and my flight plan's already activated and then I add it in the air, then I'm going to get the activate visual line select key. If you have an external HSI, in this case, like an Aspen EFD 1000, uh, what you're going to see with external interfaces is once you activate that visual approach, that HSI is going to swing to runway heading regardless of your position when a visual approach is activated, okay? That's why that dash pattern entry overlay is really useful as a visual approach. Uh, we have had some calls, uh, some folks that were, that were uh, playing with it, flying around with it, saying, hey, when I activated a visual approach, uh, the HSI just just swung to some weird uh, runway heading, and it wasn't giving me guidance to my downwind entry. Well, it was swinging to runway heading is, is what it was doing, but it, that's not dependent on where you are anywhere, all right? Um, so keep that in mind uh, and, and expect your HSI to swing to runway heading, um, and then use your hatch pattern overlay as a guide to get you into that pattern properly. Okay, so how's that gonna look on a 550 with that extra SVS button? All right, so if we do that same flight plan, we'll do uh, KMLB to X26 runway 23. Okay, with a 550, we're going to get a VDI or vertical deviation indication on our SVS page. From the pilot guide, 3-40, 3-42 if you're on the 5 Series Pilot Guide, advisory vertical deviations are provided once the track is at most 90 degrees to the final approach course. So let's say I'm flying down the Florida coast and I activate that visual and I'm way out from one runway 23. I've got a 550 in my plane. I hit that SVS button and I see the big red X's on my VDI. I expect to see this until I get closer and I'm within 90 degrees to that final approach course. Once I do, and I do get closer, what's gonna happen is now that's gonna come alive and I'm gonna see my, my vertical come in, okay? And you can also see here that uh, I'm coming up on it and I've got my magenta line for runway two, three, that's, that's coming up and then this, this comes alive and starts ticking down. Okay, what about an IFR flight plan and uh, I, I Let's say I cancel that and I just want to fly the visual. Uh, it's a beautiful day and I just want to fly a visual in, into um, an airport. Real simple, happens all the time. We do it all the time, right? So in this case, let's load up a flight plan from Melbourne to Key West, right? We're going to pick up the Melbourne VOR, MLB. We're going to jump on Victor 3. We're going to get off Victor 3 at Gazelle and we're going to fly the RNAV runway 27, Gazelle being the initial approach fix. Um, 
another thing here also, um, if I get off at Gazelle from Victor 3, and if I pick Gazelle as the initial approach fix for runway 27, it eliminates the discontinuity in my flight plan, right? No more gaps and routes. Uh, just so, uh, just just a, a, a helpful tip there. In this case, uh, burpee is is one of the fixes on along the um, RNF 27. Um, at burpee, let's say we get the runway in sight and we cancel IFR, right? I think it's like the last fix before the final approach fix there into into Key West, and we get that approved. IFR is canceled, and now I'm just flying straight in for 27. Okay. Um, once we do that, right, all we have to do in this case is change the existing approach, right? We're going to change the RNAV 27 into Key West, and we're just going to pick the visual 27 into Key West. Once we pick the visual for 27, it's going to ask us what type of visual entry we want to do. Oh, we're already lined up for the runway at this point if we we cross burpee before the final approach fix. So we're just gonna go ahead and pick a straight in. All right, so we go ahead and do that. And if we have the RNAV 27 um, activated or, or active in our flight plan, we're not like way far out, we're already within the initial approach fix into Key West. It's gonna ask me if I wanna replace the active approach. I go ahead and hit enter, and then it sends me along into uh, uh, Key West for runway 27. I'll see my lateral, my vertical deviations pop up. Keep in mind that I'm within, obviously, 90 degrees of the, the runway heading, so I'm not going to get X's on my VDI. It's just going to go ahead and show me my vertical, my, my VDI uh, with the arrows for, for uh, my glide slope. All right, so that's what that would look like on a 550, okay? As we approach and we get closer to runway 27, remember that I'm not going to get VDI guidance after or if I'm within a tenth of a mile from the threshold. So as you're coming up and you're trying this in trainer, you will see red X's on your VDI as you're getting ready to land um, in trainer or if you're, if you're doing this on an actual um, runway on your IFD. Uh, you will see that red X. That's that's okay. It's expected. We, we expect to see that. Okay. Um, keep in mind though, replacing the published IFR approach will delete the missed approach procedure. You're no longer flying that that instrument procedure. You're no longer flying that RNAV or that ILS. If you change that procedure, it will also delete the missed approach procedure in your flight plan. Now remember, you you canceled IFR, right? So a visual approach in visual meteorological conditions and no longer on an IFR flight plan, what do we do if we decide we don't want to land? Simple guys. Simply just go around. Okay. Uh, just just like we do on, on a visual, we, we just go around. But here's something really cool about the visual approach feature in the IFD is that if you don't have any legs in that flight plan after the visual approach, that's, that's the last thing that was in your flight plan, that visual is going to remain active even after you pass the runway threshold. What that means is you can stay in a closed traffic pattern. You just keep going around and you will still get guidance to the final approach course without ever having to touch the IFD. Um, it's, it's not gonna provide uh, autopilot guidance in the pattern, obviously, but if you've got it coupled, it, it will then pick up the glide slope and it'll fly, it'll fly you down um, just like you did, but you don't have to touch the IFD for, for any of that. But just keep in mind that uh, the VDI is gonna come alive once you're within 90 degrees. So your VDI, if you've got a 550, uh, is not going to become active until you have made that turn from base to final, uh, or at least you're you're getting close to that within 90 degrees of it. Okay, we do get some questions about uh, for flight and transfer and flight plans with visual approaches, and I kind of want to clear this up for a little bit. So uh, one of the questions that we do get a lot is flight plan transfers with visual approaches to and from for flight. For flight has a as a great visual approach feature. It's it's amazing. I use it all the time. Um, but people have the question about what happens when you transfer those to and from the IFD if you have a visual approach in the pattern. Does it carry over? And some cases it it does and it doesn't, but with the visual approaches, it won't. And let me just clear that up for a second. Okay, so what I mean by that is if you have a visual approach that you want to do and you're sending a four-flight flight plan to the IFD, um, it will not carry over the visual approach from for flight, 
what it will do is it will send those waypoints only. And it will send those waypoints without the visual procedure in the flight plan. So the solution or the workaround, or whatever you want to call it in this case, is go ahead and send your flight plan to the panel with the visual approach already in for flight. When you send it to the IFD, it's just going to send you the waypoints such as uh, origin, VORs, and your destination airports. Um, and then just load that visual approach into the IFD app afterwards. Hit the procedure button until you hit until you see the approaches for your final, and then just pick your visual and then your 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 pattern entry there. Super simple. Just know that it will not carry over those waypoints over from for flight. Now, what if I'm going the other way? What if I'm going from the IFD to for flight? Well, in that case, it won't load the flight plan at all. In fact, it'll kick up an error. So uh, the solution in this case is go ahead and load a flight plan from your panel without a visual approach loaded in your uh, FMS page in your IFD without a visual approach, and then load that visual approach into both your flight plan and your for flight uh, individually. Um, so if you were to ask me, I would say that the easier method of doing this is to go ahead and send it to the panel. That way you've got your visual loaded up. If you really want to do the visual approaches in for flight and have your visual show up, if you're, you're planning on doing a visual approach, um, it's less steps to do it from for flight to the IFD uh, as opposed to loading it from the panel where you have to load your visuals individually from, from for flight in the IFD. So that's, that's kind of how that system works today. All right. Uh, I, I told you guys it was going to be a really short webinar. We'll get to the, the, the Q&A here in a little bit later, but I want to talk about some of our resources. Uh, if you don't have IFD Trainer, uh, it's for the iPad. It is a free download. Um, it's it's for all the different flavors of the iPad. It uses the certified flight code. It is free and it will emulate all six different versions of the IFD, whether that be the 550, 545, the 540, 510, or the 440, 410. If you're not familiar with the 545, the 510, the 410, uh, those are all IFDs that do not have a NAVCOM. Uh, different applications, you typically don't see those in GA. Uh, we will primarily see the 550, 540, and 440, in case anybody was wondering uh, why there's there's three extra IFDs um, in there. That's why. Uh, the Michael Bauer book, the third version is out. The third edition is available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback versions. Uh, Scenario-based training, the third edition is updated for AviOS 10.3. And we can uh, file, follow along in the, the lessons inside that book with the IFD Trainer app. And again, those are available paperback and Kindle on Amazon. With that, we do have some training videos that are meant to follow along with the Flying with the Avidine IFD book. Uh, that's available on our website under the support tab. Click on Avidine Training and you will find some training videos that marry up with the lessons that are in the Flying with the Avidine IFD book. We do have some webinars on demand. Uh, if you go to our website and you go down to on-demand replay, we do have our webinars available uh, there for the replay. We also have Avidine training on YouTube. Uh, the, the, we have two channels. Avidine tech support will give you installation training tips and tricks. Remember, those are for reference use only. Always use the latest rev of the installation manual uh, when, when your mechanic or you, if you have an experimental, if you're doing uh, work on your own aircraft, make sure you have the, current, the latest rev. Those videos are for reference only. Avidine Avionics is another channel where this webinar will show up. Uh, we've got some pilot how-to videos, some promotional videos, and a couple other uh, videos there on our Avidine Avionics channel as well. Our customer knowledge base is a great, great resource on our main website. How do you get to it? Avidine.com, click pilot support at the top. It's gonna take you to our support center and knowledge base. You can submit tech support tickets right there. Um, and then you can find all of our articles in a, a, a search engine format. Great resource, pilot guide links, find out about your warranties, how to activate databases, some operational tips and tricks, and a whole bunch of other really cool articles there in our uh, knowledge base. Gary Reeves is a master instructor. He is our national training partner. He has truly mastered single pilot IFR, and he's written a book to tell you all about it. He's got some fantastic training, whether it be online, uh, in person, uh, he will 
go to you, train you in your own aircraft. You can go to him. He's got online courses. Uh, really fantastic, fantastic resource there. So make sure that you check him out over at pilotsafety.org and get some really, really great training from my friend Gary. Uh, social media, we're everywhere. We're on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, if you're not on our Avidon Pilots Club page uh, on Facebook, go ahead and uh, go over there and uh, join that and uh, join a community of a couple thousand uh, Avidon pilots just like yourself. Uh, I'm one of the admin on that page, so I'm, I'm always on there answering questions and, and interacting with you guys. I love doing it. So uh, one of the things that I really like doing as, as part of my job. So with that, that is the end of the webinar, folks. And I think we, uh, we did that in record time. Let's check out the chat here and let's see if we can answer some of these questions that we've got in here. How are you guys doing, uh, Will, Frank, and Brian? Doing pretty good here. Uh, I've got a few questions. Let me go back up uh, in the list. Okay, I see one from Valerie. I want to go ahead and uh, and answer that. So Valerie Milner um, says hi. To clarify, the only active leg of the visual is the final. Correct. Yes, yes. The only active leg of the visual is the final. The any uh, downwind or base entries that you're going to see is going to be advisory only. It's going to provide an overlay over the map, but is not going to be uh, something that that the IFD and the autopilot are going to provide guidance to say something like a, a downwind entry. Okay. Let's see. Kind of going on that topic there, Mike, real quick. Uh, Federico yep. asked a question. So he says, you mentioned the autopilot will not work. At what point will it stop working? So it, if it's a, if it's a straight and it should continue working, correct? A uh, tenth of a mile before the runway threshold is when the IFD is going to stop okay. providing that guidance. Yeah. I see. All right. But uh, of course, it won't provide guidance when you're in uh, or entering a traffic pattern, like you said, a left right. base, right down with that whole kind of thing there. Right. Gotcha. If you set up the user options and set the final to extend to three nautical miles for the final end at the three nautical mile point display, no. No, that should extend out to about 20 miles. So it's going to be an extended runway center line, Steve. Um, that that final leg, how that's going to be depicted on the map, on the IFD. It's about about a 20 20 mile extended final. Uh, if you set up that that final to extend to three nautical miles, that's just going to be where the IFD will paint where you're turning base to final. It'll be three miles out for your your final length. Uh, Josh Pegg asks a question about uh, the map overlay going away on the EFD-1000 when selecting a visual approach. Any reason why that happens, or is there a way to get this to stay? Say that one more time. The map overlay on an EFD-1000 uh, Aspen display, the HSI, it goes away when selecting a visual approach. Is there any reason why this goes away, or is there a way to uh, get this to stay? Uh, not off the top of my head. Let's uh, let's talk about it uh, over in tech support. Let's let's get some more information. I, I have questions. So uh, yeah, reach out to us over at tech support at avidine.com or pilot support at and uh, we'll we'll see what's going on there. No worries. And um, got another one here for you, uh, Mike. It says, uh, can you create a waypoint on the final? Okay, such as a waypoint on the final at three nautical miles from I guess that would be the end of the runway. A waypoint along final. I, th I think I, I think I know what he's talking about. I'm going to say no. All right. What do we got? What else? What else, guys? Once the visual approach is activated in the IFD, will it display the route on the EX5000? Great question, Steve. We have found that no. The visual will not show up on the EX5000 MFD. Uh, we've we've brought it up. We've had a huddle with the engineers, and that's that is something that we are uh, working on on getting that feature into the the EX5000. So, good question. Uh, we have identified that uh, as as something that that folks really really want. So, um, I know our our engineers in the back are certainly uh, working on that. All right, you guys have done has done great in the chat, man. I I appreciate you guys' help. Let's see. Uh, 
All right, heading to approach mode. All right, guys. Well, I think that's all the questions that I see. Um, I appreciate it. This is going to be available on our YouTube uh, shortly hereafter once we get this thing all packaged up and uploaded. Um, if, if we didn't get to your questions, um, reach out to us over at tech support, pilot support at avidine.com. Uh, and then I'll see you guys over on the Facebook channel. Um, so uh, thanks. Enjoy your Tuesday. I appreciate it. And you guys have a great day.